Hello again. This is our week in our, our book study here, Light in Plain Sight with Jill Duffield. Um, we are up to the, the week of, that talks about oil um, and the Sunday of that week, anointed with oil. It's based on Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, you probably noticed... I didn't use my typical Bible translation on that one. Um, I did it from King James. So many people know the words of the 23rd Psalm from memory, and it's especially the King James Version, me included. The one time we hear that antiquated form of English in our everyday lives, how many times have I recited it in a funeral or at a graveside? too many times to count. <laughs> and and when you think about it, that's the one time we use that really antiquated form of English in, in our daily lives. We just don't use it. I mean, if I gave you 10 to 12 lines of Shakespeare, most of you would balk and tell me you didn't understand it, didn't, didn't want to try to figure it out. But the King James Version was written at the exact same time as Lear and Macbeth and The Tempest and all these other later Shakespeare plays, the exact same time. It's the same English. You know, when I'm at a funeral and I start reciting the 23rd Psalm, uh, people join in. I mean, I invite them to, but people, you'll hear voices all over the congregation joining in and repeating those words with me. It's an important part of who we are. It's, it's a piece that, that has held on through the centuries. That King James Bible was very important for a very long time. And between that and Shakespeare, that's pretty much set in stone, that version of English, for a long time. Um, but what's fascinating is that we don't speak that way at any other time. I mean, there's no other point in our day or in our lives, when we pull out, you know, early 17th century English just for kicks. We just don't. And so it, it's always fascinated me why we still do that. What is it about those particular words that bring us so much comfort? Is it just the tradition of it? Is it just, we've equated that, especially the 23rd Psalm, with times in our lives that are so difficult. So when we, when we look at the 23rd Psalm, all that get, kind of gets in the way sometimes. To be honest, I get to the point where I'm like, I don't even think about the words anymore because I have said it so many times. I don't really think about it, which is a shame because there's some really neat imagery in the 23rd Psalm, especially this idea that about anointing people with oil. As she talks about, you know, you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Being anointed with oil, that's not something we do much anymore. Um, we don't regularly anoint people with oil, even in church. When we do, it's, it's usually like a baptism or confirmation or an ordination or at the time of death. We remind people in those moments when we do the anointing that, that they belong to God, that we are God's anointed ones. It was always interesting to me um, when I was a kid, I would, you know, as a kid, I always wanted things with my name on them. And of course, my name has a slightly different spelling than the usual. So it was hard for me to find things with my name spelled correctly. 
And on the occasions I did, I would always be so excited. But I remember receiving something that had my name on it and it had what the name meant. And my name had always meant that I was one who was anointed in Christ. That's what the name Kristen always meant, which I always found kind of fascinating. But that was, that was the point of my name. So here we have all of us at some point being anointed with oil and how important that is. That at some point we're all reminded that we're seen and that we're protected and that we're loved and that goodness and mercy will follow all the days of our lives because of the promises that God has made. So let's think for a minute. Have you ever been anointed with oil? When and why? Have you ever witnessed someone being anointed with oil? What was the context? What was the occasion for that? I remember seeing it in ordination type services, confirmations, um, people being marked and also baptisms being marked with a cross on their forehead with oil. Um, but the, the time that sticks out for me was the first time I ever saw it at a deathbed for a woman in our church who was in her 40s, her late 40s. And her daughter was pretty young, maybe eight, nine years old. And when they were doing the, they anointed her on her deathbed in the hospital and the family was gathered around. And her daughter leaned over and asked someone, why does my mom smell like salad dressing? Which, <laughs> which was kind of funny because it was such an unusual act to do that, that no one really knew, no one was used to doing it. It was not a routine part of our lives. And it was something that, that they were doing, especially for her at her request. And so everyone was kind of, you know, laughed a little like, oh, that's kind of funny. You're right. You know, it's, it's an olive oil based anointing oil. But the point was that her mother was being reminded and we all were being reminded that God was very close and that she was a beloved child of God, had been chosen by God for a purpose and for a role and that she was seen and that she was loved and that she was part of God's family. And so it was an important moment to be able to say that as she's about to make this transition into the next life, that she is as much a beloved child of God as she ever was. When has someone confirmed your sense of call to a particular work or service? And I think all of us have plenty of stories about, about those type moments. Can you remember a time when God ministered to you when you were walking through the valley of the shadow of death? And I think too, that's another question that most of us have some kind of story where where we can point to and say that was the moment that someone you know that God put someone in my path who I needed to be there at that time and those were important moments to lift up and to share and to cling to because on the days when we don't feel that we can look back to those and remember and gain strength from that so anointing with oil Maybe that's something we need to reconsider and bring back and make part of our, our, our ritual and our routine and our services again. Because I think it's pretty, it's a powerful moment. It's something that we're not used to seeing. It's something out of the ordinary. And I think that's important, especially when you're marking an important milestone in someone's life, like a confirmation or a baptism or an ordination, or even at their passing. I think that's important. So anyway, I hope that, that this has helped gain a little bit of a different light on the 23rd Psalm from the one we usually see. And I'll be back soon with another devotional. See you soon.